Africans seem to be the primary race that was indigenous to North America. Colonizer, shut up the mouth. Adding to the damn divide. White man, stay in your place. We come from Africa. This is not our land. Fuck. Always a colonizer. Always starting some dumb shit. Shut up, la mouth. Foot caca chien. Fatra. So Julius Malema, the man who sang Kill the Boar, Kill the Farmer, wants to seize all the white farms in South Africa. But what happened in Zimbabwe when this very thing occurred? In the year 2000, Zimbabwean dictator Robert Mugabe decided to seize the highly successful and productive farms of the around 4,500 white farmers in the country. Mugabe's supporters, many claiming to be war veterans, descended on the white properties, forcibly evicting their owners. The seizures were violent, both white farmers and black farm workers were killed in this process, and looting and destruction were commonplace. However, unlike the whites, who had decades of specialised skill and knowledge of farming, Mugabe's loyalists who took over were clueless when it came to the practice. And in the country that was once called the breadbasket of Africa, starvation and famine set in. In just a few short years, wheat production alone dropped from 309,000 tonnes to just 27,000 tonnes. The seizure of the farms caused economic collapse, with the government printing more money to meet its obligations and causing hyperinflation, which incredibly at its peak was around 80 billion percent per month and caused the printing of the $100 trillion Zimbabwe banknote. Millions emigrated from the nation and as late as 2019, even post Mugabe. Go back and watch this video that I'm snitching because one of the reasons why I want to respond to this video by snitching it is that it's important that Africans tell their own story. It's important that Africans speak their own truth, own your own story. Because for long, the West, let me just say, white people and, their, and Western media have been a tool for propaganda. They know how to manipulate story, how to shape it to make them see that they are the glorious people, the perfect people in the world. His history breaking down about Zimbabwe land reform didn't quite, it's not quite right. He left out a lot of things on this story to make them seem nice as if they are the ones that have the profession or the skill to grow agriculture. Now, let me tell you the real story, the action, you can go verify this. You can actually see more information and the example on the African stream and this African stream have a have a, 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 a TikTok channel so you can watch it back in the 90s the story didn't start in the 90 but the story the story of land reform was in the 90 back in 1870 or something when white people came to Africa Zimbabwe was one of those countries when they came torture kill rape take over their land 95% of the country land belong in their care. They say they are farming. If you go to the farm, people that work in that farm are black people. They are the ones that have the skills. Black people are the ones clean up the farm, putting the plant, planting and harvesting. All were done by black people. You never see any white person actually bending down, working actual hard labor in the farm. They are not. They are just standing around, supervising and controlling. That's all they did. So back in the 90s, when Mugabe <coughs> did the land reform, it wasn't all of a sudden. He made sure many times there's going to be a land reform because this is not the dark ages anymore. And there is no reason why... Our people, where the land solely belongs to, we have nothing and you people have everything. And they are telling you, even though black people were the one working on this farm, white people keep 95% of the profit. They might treat these people. So when the land reform happened, of course, a lot of the land have to be seized in order for the land to be shared fairly. You know what follow next? The West realized that if they let Zimbabwe succeed, South Africa will do the same thing. Other neighboring country like, like Gambia, like uh, Namibia, they will follow. For that, they sanctioned Zimbabwe. This guy never mentioned anything about sanction. Even 
as white people left, Zimbabwe started doing extremely well. The West see that Zimbabwe is doing well, they sanctioned them, and the whole media start talking, oh, the Zimbabwe is now uh, uh, a poor country, a hungry country. They used to be the food uh, basket of Africa, food basket of Africa, and those, all those that, this and that. You know, the media propaganda everywhere. You know, one thing you have to understand about media is that once they shape a lie and repeatedly say this lie, and everywhere you go, you see, you, hear, you see and hear the same lie, at some point, this lie will become truth in people's head. And that's what happened to country like Zimbabwe. And recently, a few months ago, they slapped another sanction on Zimbabwe. The U.S. sanction, you have to understand that U.S., because their money is the monetary reserve of the world, it's the reserve currency of the world, if your country gets sanctioned, it will affect you. You cannot export your goods. Others will be afraid to buy from you because they know that if they buy from you, they, uh, that America is going to punish them. That's what happened to Zimbabwe. But today, Zimbabwe is doing extremely well. Even under the assumptions, they are doing well. They produce the best tobacco. tobacco. They are producing more tons than they used to. So yes, the sanction cripples Zimbabwe. It makes their money fall. It raised them basically in the map. Taking back their land from white people did not do that. American sanction did that. And today, that is one of the reasons why South Africa is so afraid to take back their land. And that's why some white South Africa think it's okay, it's morally okay for them to build a country where they segregate themselves and own this country, print their own money, basically form a country in the middle of a black nation. So what? So that the media will not call you a dictator? The name dictator started it back in the 90s for Mugabe when after he took his land. After he did the land reform. This is extremely important why the voice of our people, the voice of Zimbabwe, I'm not Zimbabwe, but I know the history at the back of my palm. I know what happened. The voice of our people need to state the truth of what happened. So when these kind of guys come on the internet and lie and say, oh, when white people leave, the, the skill worker left. No, there was no skill worker. Black people are the skill worker because they are the one working on the farm. Show me a picture where a group of white, black, white people are in a farm in Africa actually harvesting, planting. Black people are doing that. All they do is sit around. They seize 90% of our land, sit around, what make our people work for them in that land and keep all the profit. So next time you want to tell a history, Please tell the history in full. Don't leave everything out. Because once you leave some certain things out or change the word, the whole meaning of the thing become a completely bullshit. Zimbabwe did not collapse because they kick white people out of what belongs to them, their own land. Zimbabwe suffer incredible financial difficulties after America's last sanction on them. And because Africa is not a united country, when America slaps sanction on one African country, they can still do business with another African country. And that's exactly what they are doing now with Uganda. They remove them from monetary fund or whatever and sanction them. And the other African country are still going to France, going to UK, going to America, speaking to them on the phone and shaking their hands. Until Africa realize that you are black and as long as you are black, there is no other place for you but Africa. As long as, as well as we realize that we will start fixing all this problem. Because I don't see why Zimbabwe will be facing sanction on, uh, from the West. Um, what do you call it? Uganda will be facing sanction of the West. But Senegalese president will meet up with Manuel Mako. Senegalese president, you see, work together as Africa. That's the only way you can get ahead in life. So next time, when you open your mouth and want to talk about Africa, do your research properly and tell the truth. Your people never have any skill. What they are, they are murderers, they are criminals. They are evil. They brought all kinds of hate and all kinds of disease to Africa. And that's why today people don't want them there. Okay? They never integrate. If you go to South Africa today, some of them don't know how to speak one African language. They refuse to live together with the people in the country. And Julia Malema said that he would, yes, they should go ahead and take their land back. And trust me, nothing will happen. 
production of Zimbabwe, with all dissension, is still doing well, more than any other thing. That's the same thing happening in, in North Korea. In, in North Korea, it's not because North Korea don't have democracy that uh, they are on sanction or because uh, the guy, no, he's on, they are on sanction, crippling the hardest sanction anyone can find because North Korea refused to give up their nuclear power development. And America don't want that because America bullied and rooted country without no powerful bomb. Once you have a very big bomb that you can hit them as hard as they can hit you, they will leave you motherfucking alone. So take your lying ass and shut the hell up and shut the hell up. Please, please, please stop telling other people's history. A PhD is something that is used to give the Western perspective. The Bantu language is Hebrew language. It's derived from the Aleph Beit, which was given to the Europeans as an alphabet. It's truly Hebrew language. So is um, the Cameroonian Coromante languages. Bantus means house of a particular people. Bayat noon ta. You don't know what you're talking about. Historically, linguistically, and in terms of migration, anytime you research the Bantus expansion, it goes east to west. And it is in the southeast region around Ethiopia, Soudan. The Sudan is Soudan. Okay, that means Sojudan. The area you were talking about, West Africa, is inhabited by the Edomites, hence the Edo tribe, who cooperated with the Europeans to sell everybody into slavery. Your history is largely a lie, and your understanding of linguistics is wholly in error. Just because you have a PhD from a Western university, it just means that you're sharing Western ideas, not Eastern thought, which is scripturally based and based in Hebrew. Yaganda, Kenya, Tanzania, as well as Ethiopia, is where the children of Yah originate from. And their genetics are found all over Western Europe and Britain, and even in what is so-called Israel today. And that can be pr proven that, that the people who originate from the Levant have E1B1A as the genetics, which is the children of the transatlantic slave trade, and even the linguistic pattern spreads south, from southeast to the west. The land of Edom is Nigeria, and that's where these people... Literally everything you stated is provably incorrect. Any quick study of anthropology or genetics would tell you that that is not the case. Where did you get this shit from? Just do some research because no, provably no. Anthropology is your friend. This virginity white cloth test thing. I grew up knowing it to be an African culture, to be more specific, actually, as a Nigerian. I grew up knowing it to be a Yoruba culture. Now come to find out that it is practiced in Europe as well. And not only that, it is in the Bible in Deuteronomy 22. So now, as an African who is deconstructing and decolonizing, and as an African who knows that there are some cultures that we Africans believe is ours, but they actually aren't. I can't help but wonder if this particular one is one of them. I mean, I won't be surprised at all, given that it's in the Bible, given that we were colonized by Europeans. Is this one of the madness or could this be one of the madness that we have been practicing now for so long during and after colonization now that we believe that it is our culture too. I mean, I already know a good number of things that we practice and believe to be ours, but they aren't. They are actually from the colonizers. Could this be one of them? There is a South African lady I follow. I'll tag her down below. She did a couple of videos talking about cultures that they practice in South Africa and they believe is actually their 
indigenous cultures. But they actually aren't. I can't help but wonder if we peel all this back, like we peel back onion, what would we have left? <laughs> and when we get to that point when we realize that everything is a lie, would we be able to retrace our steps and actually find our true cultures? Because all we have now is post-colonialism. And a good number of them aren't our cultures. A good number of them. The more I find out, the more hot I get because the more I realize just how far removed as a people we are from our true self, our true identities. A lot of the things we believe are, is our ways, aren't. <laughs> and, but here we are. Here we are dying to protect these false cultures that actually aren't ours, but we believe so deeply that they are. And we would fight for fight to keep them, but they are not. It's they came with the colonizers, people who came and said the ways of your ancestors are hedonism, the ways of your ancestors are pagan, are heathen. Now we can't be embracing those who demonize our ancestors because we are our ancestors and our ancestors are us. Mm. We are our ancestors sitting here. We we are the totality of all that existed. In us, we carry all those people who came before us. Mm. So we must be a good representation of them. And we can't do that in the expenses of misrepresenting them and coming up with something to suit the current narrative. The current narrative is neo-colonial and neo-colonialism has produced neo-African culture and neo-African cultures produce Afropians, you know, poor imitations of the white men, mm. uh, black people who are... Uh, 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 caught up in white dichotomy. Mm. Now we need to get ourselves out of that space. Mm. And it is our responsibility to decolonize. So it is not an easy thing, but we see we see the light. We see a lot of people are awakening to the African reality. We see a lot of people are throwing away that fear. We see a lot of people are are shaking it off because they see that this thing is a mind control. Mm. Why is it we, only we, Africans who belongs to Methodist, Luther, Roman Catholic, we are the only one who wear the uniform. But you don't see the Europeans wear have you seen them wearing this uniform of church? I no, never. Never. Yes, <laughs> never. 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 I, I talked about it uh, on another uh, uh, interview about um, have you ever seen white Amadodana as a Wesel? Mm. I know Abam Klopp. Mm. No. Why is it only us who do this thing? Mm. Now, their origin are from slavery. Uh, when and if you have not yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe down below. Turn your notification. Anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. And feel free to leave your opinion down. What you think about this video? Thank you for watching to the end. I'll stay blessed. Bye bye.